Phyllis, what is UNRWA? UNRWA stands for the UN Relief and Works Agency. It's basically, it serves as the as the civil service of occupied Palestinian territories, and it protects the rights and the access to things like food and education and healthcare for Palestinian refugees throughout the region, in the West Bank, in Gaza, inside Israel in a couple of occasions, but also in refugee camps in Jordan, in Syria, in Lebanon. There are over now 5 million Palestinians who are registered with the United Nations as refugees who are provided with assistance by UNRWA. And it's by far the most important agency working in Gaza. All of the other agencies, both UN agencies and international NGOs, depend on UNRWA's ability to get material in, to get food in, to get water purification in. All those things that the other agencies are trying to do, they depend on UNRWA to make it happen. This is an organization that was created back in 1949, Laura. This was the first UN humanitarian agency ever to do anything. And its job was to protect Palestinian refugees. The Gaza population, 70% are refugees from 1947-48 who, 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 who lost their land that is now Southern Israel, right? So now that they've been dispossessed of their refugee homes in Gaza over and over and over again, this is the last million and a half people, half the population of all of Gaza, squeezed into this tiny little town, Rafa, on the southern tip of Gaza. And what we're seeing is a huge Israeli effort to undermine UNRWA, the one institution, the one organization, the one agency of the UN whose job it is to protect the refugees. So the, the Israelis have launched two big attacks on UNRWA in the last two weeks. The first was only hours after the International Court of Justice announced its ruling that Israel was plausibly committing genocide in its actions in, in Gaza, and that it therefore had to do a set of six different things to make sure that the, if it was genocide, that it stopped, and if it wasn't genocide, that it never got any further. That was the order of the court. And immediately, within hours, Israel announced oh, we have a big surprise. It turns out they had had this material for a month, claiming that 12 people who worked for UNRWA, out of a total of 13,000 UNRWA employees in, in uh, Gaza, so a tiny, tiny percentage, that 12 people allegedly, without showing any evidence, just an allegation, that 12 people who worked for UNRWA were supposedly supporters of Hamas and may have participated in some of the horrific events of October 7th inside Israel. And without missing a beat, the U.S. immediately announced, well, we're cutting all our funding to UNRWA. We can't let this go on. Two weeks later, just this past weekend, what do we see? We see another attack from Israel. So this time they're claiming, again, without any evidence, that one of the tunnels that crisscross underground across Gaza, some of which, of course, we now know were built by the Israelis when they first took over and started occupying the territory, somewhere in there is a tunnel that goes under the UNRWA headquarters. And the Israelis claim that, that Hamas was using it at some point as, depending on who you talk to, either a command center, a, uh, a computer center, or a communication center. They couldn't even get their story straight of what it allegedly was. We don't know what it was. We know it was a tunnel. We know there's tons of tunnels. And there were computers in the tunnel. And there were probably guns in the tunnel because the place is replete with guns. So who knows exactly what happened? Nobody knows. What we do know is that because of that, the U.S. now says, we are done funding UNRWA. We are not ever going to fund it again. That was the language in the Senate bill that passed last week, that hasn't luckily been passed by the House and probably never will, that was going to give $14 billion additional unconditional aid to the Israeli military and say explicitly that another tranche, a very tiny tranche of money that was supposed to go to global crisis zones and provide humanitarian assistance, including to Ukraine, including to the Palestinians, including to several other places, that none of that money can go to UNRWA. So that was another, another nail in the coffin trying to kill this institution. 
How many people rely on UNRWA for their daily sustenance and how close are those people at this point already to starvation? You know, in Gaza, everyone is very close to starvation. 90% of the entire population is eating one meal or less a day. Think about that. 90% of a population of 2.3 million people. But the other thing that happens, UNRWA is the only agency in the international system whose mandate includes support for all rights of the Palestinian refugees, including the right of return. The right of return is baked into international law. The, the Convention on Refugee Rights of the UN, the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Refugees, they take that responsibility for refugees all over the world. For Palestinian refugees, there's an additional guarantee, Resolution 194, that was also passed at the UN in, in 1949, that says explicitly that Palestinians who were expelled in 1947-48 have the right to go home and to compensation for their losses along the way. They've never been able to realize those rights. And without UNRWA, without UNRWA, there will be no agency whose job it is to defend those rights. And whose the right job it is to defend, and also it seems to me, whose existence attests to the continuation of an unsolved problem. So to me, it's profoundly immediate, having to do with hunger and death and dying. It's profoundly political, as you pointed out, very little investigation, really none by the United States before the cutoff was declared. In some argue, in some reports, I've seen the Israeli case rest on, well, the names were the same or similar, we think. Um, and then the third aspect be the eradication of an idea. It's the, the erasure. Of this it's concept the... of a problem that needs resolving with, I guess, the hope that everyone will just forget. Is that the idea here? That is the idea. That was the idea of Zionism in its earliest forms. They said the first, the first generation that was expelled will die off and the younger generations will forget. They were wrong. They were wrong. The younger generations have not forgotten. But the UNRWA is the only agency whose mandate is to protect that right and make sure that they stay in existence and continue their work until the Palestinian refugees find a, and achieve a just and durable solution to their plight that's based on human rights and refugee rights, including the right of return, right. all the rights to which they are entitled. So UNRWA's work is completely unfinished. 